Hey, there we are. Good morning. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. It is uh, Saturday morning, uh, the 18th of July, 2020. Uh, it's 8 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, been out walking the dog already this morning. We've had, uh, I've had my coffee, so it uh, should be ready to go to talk about RC submarines this morning. Um, I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to get uh, signed in. There's still a few minutes left before 8 o'clock, so uh, we'll, we'll refrain from getting too far ahead of everyone until everyone shows up. Um, what I can probably start out with, though, is uh, a little bit of a heads up in terms of a, a change in format for these uh, YouTube live discussions. So for the most part, because, you know, the number of questions is pretty limited, uh, you know, for these guys, you guys like to listen, but uh, there's not typically, you know, a lot of questions live. Um, so what really what these uh, YouTube uh, videos turn into is, uh, is an update about what I've got going on. Uh, you know, hints and tips and, and all of that kind of thing. Um, so what I have uh, decided to do, unless there is a tremendous uproar from the general population, is I am going to begin pre-recording these. But what I would urge you guys to do is to reach out to me, either through my channel, through my site, through my email, uh, through the messenger on my website, and ask me questions. And I will deal with them specifically on the uh, pre-recorded YouTube video that will be put out on a monthly basis just like it is right now. So what that means is this will not be a live presentation anymore. And there's another reason for that as well. And that is because um, I have created a, uh, another platform that is, I think, a little bit more conducive to uh, back and forth uh, showing people how to do things, uh, working through problems, and that is my Dive Tribe Gathering. And that actually goes on every two weeks. Now, there is uh, a, a fee to join the, the Dive Tribe membership, but uh, there's a ton of benefits, including discounts, uh, sneak peeks at new products, and, of course, the Dive Tribe Gathering, which uh, is basically, as it stands right now, about a, over a dozen people uh, with a lot of background in RC submarines that uh, just talk subs for an hour. And uh, this is an opportunity for uh, members to show off their projects. It is an opportunity to talk about uh, problems and challenges that they have, uh, questions about the hobby, um, basically anything that you want. And uh, right now it's, it's really informal and the amount of information that is transferred uh, through the course of that one hour is pretty tremendous. So, uh, what the heck was that? Someone kicked me off. They didn't like what I was saying. Sorry about that. Hopefully, we're not interrupted again. Um, all right, back to the Dive Tribe. So, basically, what I'm saying is uh, if you want that, uh, that live feel if you want to be able to communicate back and forth and show specifically what you have going on that is the way to do it um you know this this youtube live is is you know it gives you the chance to type a question and i can respond to it but um the ability to show what you've got going on uh show challenges that you have um, but more importantly pick the brains of a ton of people beyond myself uh that ha may have experience in uh, areas that i'm not as strong in uh, it also gives you the opportunity to get different points of view as well, because as you know, I can be opinionated from time to time, and uh, it's good to to hear the input from uh, from other people. So uh, this, like I said, is the last live live YouTube live. Uh, everything else is going to be pre-recorded from now on. But I urge you to join the Dive Tribe. Go to my website um, down on the bottom there. It tells you when it is every two weeks, so it's more often. Uh, than these live videos as well. And I do try and shake it up. So I'll, I'll mix it up. Uh, the first time it may be 
you know, an evening on the Thursday, and then the next week it could be a morning on a weekend. I just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to join in regardless of where you're at. And I can see people from the UK and India saying hello there. Hi to you guys. Thank you for, uh, for joining us this beautiful Saturday uh, morning or evening as the case may be. So, hey, let's, uh, let's start talking about uh, things that we have going on. Uh, I'm going to switch this around. Uh, the uh, the infamous Type 21. This is rapidly approaching the point where I am going to be uh, trimming the boat out. And it kind of looks like a, a bowl full of spaghetti right now. This is the, the main control uh, module right here. And uh, it houses the receiver uh, servos, the main drive motors, the speed controller, and the ballast air pump uh, in there as well. And there's also some functionality built in there for emergency gas blow uh, if for whatever reason the boat does not end up coming back up to uh, the surface again. Where I'm at right now, I'm just finalizing the throw on all of these uh, respective linkages um what i can do let's see here this is all connected well, i'm not going to play with that but anyhow you can see i've got operational bow retracts there and uh, operational torpedo shutter doors up front there and i've got these actually uh linked together so that when the planes extend the torpedo shutters open and that frees up uh, a channel for additional features. Uh, the logic of course behind that being when the boat submerges um, you're going to get prepped to launch torpedoes and therefore the shutters are going to uh, open up. Um, here's the forward control module. Um, this has all of the servos and everything for the um, um, all of the, the, the dive planes and uh, all of that stuff. And this also has the, uh, the gear pump for the um, tower, for the periscopes, because it uses hydraulics to uh, extend and retract them. So this is, uh, like I said, rapidly approaching completion. Uh, I am hoping that within the next few weeks, uh, this will see the water, which is going to be uh, exciting. It's going to take a lot of foam to get that thing floating to the correct water line. But uh, we will make it happen. It will get done one way or the other. I'm pretty excited. This has been a long time coming. Um, here's something else I've got, uh, I've got going on right now. This is a British Upholder class submarine. And this was sent back to me by the owner because he's having some issues with uh, the electronics inside. Uh, I am going to basically go through them, make sure that everything is 100% functional. Um, based on what I'm seeing so far, this isn't going to be uh, a big deal at all. There's a big uh, sealed lead acid, five amp hour battery that powers everything. Uh, this was broken um, at one point and uh, need to reconnect this for the uh, the owner. Uh, you can see the upper hull in the back. It's actually a really, really cool boat and it works uh, really well. You can see the, uh, the periscopes sitting in the tray there ready for installation. As a, you know, a bit of a, of a tip, this is a, I believe it's a Roby. Let me see here. Well, this is called an Ernst Ultra Stand. Ernst ultra stand and uh, it's like 20 bucks and uh, works really really good as a pond side stand for your boat or as a, a work stand um, i use it a lot when i'm building my boats because it's got these trays in here for all of the bolts and screws uh, and miscellaneous hardware so that doesn't get uh, misplaced and of course with it being plastic uh, it is not going to have any issue with water dripping on or into it uh, at all so this is not going to take very long to get uh, cleaned up. I'm going to grab another receiver. I have a hunch that this receiver has gone bad, so I'm going to swap that out on Monday uh, or later this weekend. We'll see and, uh, and see if we can get it going again. Um, one thing that I wanted to show out with this was how this boat ended up getting to me because it's pretty awesome. 
Um, this is this is how it was shipped to me. This is a uh, a bulletproof shipping crate, and uh, you can see there was a you know a main pack uh, you know passage on the on the one side here that the hull sat in, and then they had these foam blocks that would lock it into place. And I've got them all set out so that I know exactly how it goes back together again. The radio and everything was in this compartment. And then the, uh, the cylinder was in that one. So, you know, many would say it's, it's likely overkill, but, you know, to be brutally honest, if it showed up, uh, you know, in one piece and there was no damage, then it's money well spent. And, uh, of course, you know, that he'll always have this as a transport case um, if he ever needs to ship it uh, or if he ends up selling it. Um, he'll have that case. So if you ever want the perfect example of how to ship the boat, if you've got the time, energy, and resources, this is what you would be looking at doing. Uh, this is a solid pine crate with forklift um, lifts on the, on the bottom so forklifts can get to it. Two-inch foam blocks, uh, lots of bubble wrap. So um, I just thought that would be worthwhile pointing out to you guys. It's... Uh, it's very cool that someone took the, the time and energy to do that. You, you'd be amazed at how I've seen people ship boats to me in one or many pieces. Uh -huh. So here is uh, something else kind of exciting. Um, let's see if anybody recognizes what this might be. Any guesses from the, uh, the peanut gallery out there? It's pretty recognizable for anybody who's a fan of Russian boats. Hint, hint. No, nobody's talking. Or your slow typers. This is this is the uh, the two front bow sections for our upcoming set of 3D files for a one one forty four scale Russian Typhoon. And this uh, this file was uh, generated by an exceptionally talented individual by the name of Randy up in uh, Canada who's uh, worked with me on the uh, Skipjack and Los Angeles class 3D files. And uh, he's working on this based on blueprints that I supplied to him. Uh, you can see all of the beautiful scribing in there. Um, this is basically going to be uh, the proof of concept for the 3D files that people will be able to purchase and download. So you can print out your very own uh, RC Typhoon submarine. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. At 1144 scale, it's actually very, very manageable. It's going to end up being, oh man, I'm guessing like five feet long. Um, and it's set up for a three inch watertight cylinder. Uh, as you can see, the bulkheads are, uh, are right in there in place and ready to go. So keep an eye out for that uh, to be coming soon as well. Um, on that note, I'm pretty stoked. I got a, uh, a new 3D printer that that was printed on. Uh, it's a 3D Delta Wasp Delta printer. Um, does beautiful, beautiful prints uh, very, very quickly. So super excited to finish printing that out so uh, we can fully check out the capabilities. Uh, okay, let's see here. Let's go back and see if I've missed anything. Um, how much will that sub weigh? I think you were talking about the Type 21. Let me tilt this a little bit without my phone falling over. I'm going to take a guess. Put the control module up on top here. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to guess that right now it is going to clock in at between 60 and 70 pounds. That's my guess. Uh, that is without the installation of any uh, ballast weight in the keel. Um, but realistically, I probably won't need any. It's a pretty heavy hull. Um, and because it is a twin prop boat, um, you're not going to get that torque induced roll that you would see with single screw boats, such as a polder here. Uh, you can see that gigantic prop and that's uh, 
gosh, that's like probably three and three quarter, almost four inches in diameter there. So you can imagine when that thing begins spinning, uh, it's going to heel that boat over. And so you really need to make sure that you've got uh, a ton of weight in that keel uh, and a lot of foam up top to stop it from uh, from wanting to roll. So we'll see what that ends up looking like. And obviously you guys will see it. I'll be making a video uh, on that sub specifically and the trimming process. Um, the only thing about not putting the weight in the keel is that you may lose a little bit of static stability uh, of the boat. So it may want to roll around. And then if that happens, obviously you add weight to the keel and you add foam just below the waterline to help counteract that tendency. So um, I, like I said, I'm going to be doing uh, a video that's going to overview uh, the functions uh, of that boat once I get them all dialed in and before I install the foam. So you guys can see what I did. All right. Uh, back to the Ernst stand. Is this a repurposed stool or bought as a specialty sub stand and where can they be purchased? I got mine off of Amazon. Um, it is a, uh, a boat stand, you know, for RC boats. But uh, I mean, obviously it works well for basically anything. It comes with uh, this um, foam on here that basically wraps around and mine's coming undone because I've had this for, for like forever. But, uh, you know, it, it uh, allows the this particular boat to rest here and here. But if you had a, you know, a bigger boat, it would rest here and a smaller one would rest in the bottom. So, you know, it's really, really flexible uh, in terms of its usefulness. Um, I highly recommend it. At, uh, like I said, 20 bucks, it's really can't go wrong. Um, and as a, as a functional boat stand, it's, it's great to bring to the uh, pond. All right, that's it. There's no, no more questions. Apparently you guys know everything there is to know about RC submarines. That is great. How to make a body of submarine. Um, well, if you're just starting out, the best way to create the uh, body of a submarine is to buy it. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why. Building an RC submarine is hard and complicating matters by fabricating your own hull uh, exponentially increases the likelihood of a project stall out and early death. Now, if uh, I'm not saying it's not possible, I did it my very first time out um, building my first RC submarine it took three years, three years back in 1999. Um, I started and I think it, well, maybe it was two years and it launched in 2001 ish, um, to build it, uh, back when I did my first one, I built a wooden master of the N Disney Nautilus in one thirty second scale. It was a five and a half foot long boat. Uh, and then I created a rubber mold. And then I created a fiberglass shell and then I laid up fiberglass inside and then I figured out how to get them mated together to make them look good. Um, all of that said, the easiest way for you to create uh, your hull is to uh, simply buy the parts from water friendly materials. So in the case of a boat like Upholder or uh, Los Angeles class is a really good example of that. You're looking at perfect cylindrical cross sections, right? It's a basically a long tube. So all you're going to do is buy a long tube, uh, a chunk of pipe. And then what you're going to end up doing is um, fabricating the, the bow and the stern out of, again, water friendly materials. And one of the best ways to do that, and you can do this for the entire hull if you want as well, is to get some closed cell fiberglass or uh, styrofoam. And I'm going to grab a chunk for you right now. Hold on a second. Ta -da! Okay. This is what you're after. Uh, this comes in sheets. It comes from your local home improvement store. Um, typically, they'll use it for ins uh, insulating walls of like sub basements and that kind of thing. 
um, can come in different thicknesses. I've seen two inch as well, which would uh, obviously cut your work down quite a bit. But you would basically create a bunch of, of sections, cross sections, and you would glue them together. So boop, boop, doop, 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 and, uh, and contour, shave it, sand it, smooth it until you have your rounded bow and your rounded stern section. Then what you're going to do is uh, utilize epoxy resin. Epoxy resin. Did you catch that? Not polyester resin, not the stuff that you get from, you know, the, the home improvement aisle for working on cars, you know, and that kind of thing. Two-part epoxy resin. If you use the polyester resin, um, or basically uh, a lot of different adhesives and solvents, it dissolves this stuff into a messy blue goop. And that is not what you want to do after you spent all that time creating those um, master patterns, right? So epoxy does not attack this uh, product. So I highly recommend epoxy uh, and uh, fiberglass cloth as the medium to create the shell, all right? So you're going to buy the epoxy cloth and the two-part epoxy, you're gonna lay up layers and layers and layers of it over top, let it cure, trim it all off, and you've got your end cap and your end cap, and you glue those onto your tube, and ta-da, you've got the body of your submarine. And then you can make things like um, appendages, all of your dive planes and all of that stuff, out of plastic sheets. And I just, I pre get a whole bunch of, of this stuff. This is quarter inch thick solid plastic sheets that you can get from specialty plastic stores. Um, and you just basically cut the shape out and you sand the edges to make them all round and everything and you drill a hole for the shaft and that's it. So very, very quickly you end up with, uh, you know, the body of a submarine. Now, um, you know, like I said, it gets more complicated with when you get into more like organic shapes you know for example if you were to try and do like trafalgar uh you know or astute or something like that they've got pretty funky shapes to them um, it takes more skill more practice to be able to create those hull forms um, but absolutely very very doable so i have on my website in the blog section bob's blog up on the top um, a dedicated blog um, article talking about the lost foam method, which is what I just talked about. So you lay up the fiberglass on the outside and then you carve the, the foam out from the inside. So you're losing the foam. Therefore, it's called the lost foam method. All right. That is um, the, the quick and dirty on an easy way to create an RC submarine hull. But back to what I said at the beginning, if you're just starting out, you know, for a few hundred dollars to get a professionally laid up, fabricated and engineered hull is going to save you massive amounts of uh, problems and frustrations, all right? And the likelihood of you actually culminating your project in success is exponentially increased when you have a good solid hull to start out with, all right? I always recommend to people, you know, walk and then run. Building your own RC submarine from scratch is definitely running. All right, um, you know, there, there's a lot to it and you may understand the, the big picture scenario, but there's a lot of intricate things that can cause your entire project to crash on you. Um, that investment upfront will allow you to build your skill set, round out the fundamentals to the point where you can feel more confident in uh, starting to take upon yourself the task of building things yourself. All right. Let's see here. There was, uh, can you gyro stabilize roll while underway like is done with RC aircraft using differential diving planes? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can. And actually, um, my good friend Dwayne Hill has a monstrous 148th scale uh, USS Seawolf submarine hull that I sold to him. And the cool thing about uh, Seawolf is, is on the very outside, They've almost got uh, like trim tabs. And in, in real life, they're actually utilized for roll stabilization uh, and they're independently actuated or oppositely actuated, however. 
So the the easy way of doing that uh, is uh, basically to set up you know servos to to manipulate those uh, dive planes, and then to put an automatic pitch controller on them. Now I'm not sure because I've never really put this you know into my my brain how you would utilize standard dive planes to uh, dive and surface the boat and roll stabilize because um, that's the integration of two different planes of um, input. You've, you've got your uh, pitch plane and your roll plane, right? So that you need two different sensors to be able to uh, collect that data and then put them out independently. Um, so I would say you could do the gyro stabilized role, but you would need a dedicated set of control surfaces that would take that task upon themselves. Um, the other thing that I'll mention about that is that they are going to be absolutely useless unless you're moving at a very um, fast pace because control surfaces obviously need water moving over them in order to produce any sort of force upon the model. So. Um, you know, in the case of modern boats, such as a polder, um, these control surfaces are forward of the propeller. So the propeller is blowing water out the back and water at a more uh, slow pace is, is coming in from the front. So you need that water flowing over these control surfaces to impart uh, force to the model. So the issue is uh, when you need it most, when you're first firing up that prop and the whole model keels over because all that torque is, is going through, um, your differential control is going to do that. Zip, nil, nothing for you. Uh, and then by the time you get up to speed, you don't need it anymore because the, the, the prop is, is engaging the water at a much closer velocity uh, to, its, to its RPM. Um, than it was when it was stationary. So basically what I'm saying is it's absolutely possible. Um, is it worth the hassle? If you're an engineer and you just want to do it because you're an engineer uh, or someone who just wants to do it to see if you can do it, yeah, do it. Um, if you think it's going to drastically improve the performance of your model, no, don't think so. Uh, prove me wrong. Uh, big difference if the control surfaces are behind the prop. So, uh, you know, if you have something like a Holland boat, for example, that had all the control surfaces in a, in a cruciform uh, orientation directly behind the propeller, and you were going to independently actuate the rear dive planes, which, again, I don't know how you do that to also get pitch control, but regardless, then it would work. So that was a long-winded description of gyro, stabilized roll in an RC submarine. Snuffy Cox. I am in the final stages of the 112th uh, Seahoon from Otto. Yeah, out of the Czech Republic. Ah, I am considering the best control horn arrangement. Very narrow. Yeah. Is it best to use a ball articulated arm in narrow and mechanically amplifying in a broad area? Um, okay, so I've run into this before and um, the thing about the ball the ball and socket and I think this is what you're talking about here we got a and this is a big example of it by the way but I'm just showing people what we're talking about <clears throat> you've got a socket and you've got a ball and this snaps on over the top and that creates like a pivot um, the kind of more traditional way of doing it is is a simple L-shaped horn that goes on the top. This is the shaft, for example, and this is the, the flat plane that swivels it. All right, um, is to simply put a, a a rod through it and then push and pull that, and that's what swivels, and that's uh, a lot more compact in terms of size. Now, this is something that you may want to consider. This is the uh, in, a, in an enclosed area, this is the setup that I have for the rudder on the Type 21. All right, so you've got a very, very compact sprocket that is connected to the rudder shaft of the boat with a tooth belt that runs back to the area that has more room to work with. 
okay? And then you've got the arm, the control arm right there. And that's what swivels everything. This works really, really good. It is perfectly smooth. Um, that may be something that you would think about considering. Um, you know, if you needed to, if you, you, could, you could literally cut that belt in half and cut that sprocket down as well so that you had a very, very compact um, setup back there. So that could be something that you might want to consider in, uh, in an area of enclosed space. Um, you know, and, and honestly, the other way of doing it, um, you know, unless you're a scale Nazi, is just cut a hole in the side of the hull and have a little arm stick out um, you know, I don't think anybody's going to give you grief if they see linkage uh, exposed like that. Um, you know, I certainly wouldn't. Uh, it's it's more tidy and and more scale like in appearance to have everything enclosed, but sometimes you just can't do it. All right, so just think that through. Uh, it probably a, a a good thought, a good way of uh, going about it. All right. Kenneth is excited about the Typhoon. I'm, I'm excited too. Typhoon is, from a like real boat perspective, my famous, my favorite boat of all time. Um, simplest scratch build would be a large torpedo based on a PVC tube. Um, sure, yeah, it'd be you know a big uh, a big torpedo. Yeah, yeah. It's provided you've got room to get the the weight low and the and some foam high. Um, or, you know, more importantly, the, the center of gravity as low as possible and centralized, then yeah, absolutely it would be. And at uh, 1 12th scale, you um, absolutely, by the way, have the capabilities of turning autos, um, torpedoes into functional um, weapons that uh, are not only launchable, but could be completely RC. If you can get the, the, the small RC gear, um, there's no reason that you wouldn't be able to RC those torpedoes so that you could drive them around in the pond after shooting them out. And that would uh, actually clear up some channels because you could also, uh, for example, you'd only need two, well, I mean, maybe even one channel, uh, a rudder channel to steer the torpedo. You could have another one for throttle if you wanted to be able to control the speed of the torpedo. But if you use a little micro four channel uh, receiver, you know, like like this one, um, and you, if you take the case off, this gets super small, by the way, um, you'd have an extra channel to launch the torpedo as well, um, be that a magnetic or mechanical launching solution. So think about that. Uh, Mrs. Cooter, do you own an Air Hogs toy submarine? No, I have owned those toy submarines uh, in the past. Um, typically, if I remember correctly, they operate on like 27 megahertz, like AM frequency or something like that. I always had a really, really rough time with um, reception. It would, it would um, not be reliably uh, engaged to the to the transmitter so it would kind of sit there and then I fiddle with it and then it would burst itself and you know at any rate you know it, and the, the other thing to consider is where you're going to be running those toys uh, usually it's in like a chlorinated swimming pool right that's probably the best place to run it um, and chlorine for those of you who haven't joined me many many times in the back um, the um, chlorine content of swimming pools, particularly if it's a high chlorine content of swimming pools, uh, significantly impact the ability for radio waves to propagate through that medium. So uh, I find even with mine, after I have my pool guy comes in and, uh, and um, hits my pool, you know, on, on pool day, um, that heavy chlorination can mean that like within three feet, four feet, I lose signal to my boat and the emergency fail safe kicks in and pops it back up to the surface. So, um, yeah, that is, um, something to think about with those toys, but Hey, for 20 bucks or 30 bucks, if you, if you want to occupy yourself for a few minutes and see what you can make happen, then Hey, 
go nuts. Um, kind of the neat thing about that is, you know, if you wanted to RC a little micro torpedo with it or something like that, then there you go. All right. Me, you, think. Think before we give info on big RC torpedo friends Tony X mod. Hmm. I am going to need to bust out my uh, top secret deciphering. Uh, um, think before we give info on big RC torpedo friends, Tony. Think before we give info. I don't know what you mean. Are, are you worried people are going to build RC torpedoes for terrorism? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Torpedo is in my topic to my Gotland, 130th scale. So 32nd scale is close enough. Um, initially, I was going to um, put torpedoes in this Type 21, but um, because of the massive number of things that I have going on right now in terms of new product development, I got new subdrivers um, coming out, a, a 300 series uh, MSD subdriver. I'm bringing production of a lot of products in-house because I've hired somebody. I don't know if I told you this. It was on the forums. Um, his name's Jason Butterfield, and he is like super awesome. Um, but what we're starting to do is bring a lot of production that we're currently outsourcing in-house. So uh, this is starting with things like the Skipjack Conversion Kit. Actually, I got a lot of stuff to talk to you guys about. The Skipjack Conversion Kit. So that plastic kit from Mobius. Uh, 135th scale, 35th, um, 72nd, 72nd, what am I talking about? 172nd scale, um, that's back in the house. Uh, so the fitting kits used to be in production from David Merriman and they were like a gajillion dollars and they took him a long time to put them together because it included like a hundred parts. We, uh, we got our brains back into our skulls again and, and decided to offer those kits with the core pieces needed to convert those plastic models into fully functional RC submarines. Starting with the Skipjack kit, that is out. It's in the online store right now. It's in the featured products. If you go to my homepage, it's like right there. 99 bucks includes all of the cast resin control surfaces, mounting blocks, uh, bulkheads, all of that stuff. All right, so uh, check that out. That production is brought in-house. We're manufacturing all of that um, at our facility right now. We're also gonna be bringing the um, 177 scale Disney Nautilus in-house. That's a bajillion pieces and a really complicated pour, by the way. Uh, a lot of resin in a compact mold and um, it's taken us quite a bit to get it figured out, but we, we did finally get it figured out. So. What I'm getting at, back to the torpedoes, I don't have a lot of time and energy for new product development, particularly something as, as temperamental as a torpedo. Um, so as such, uh, you guys who've been waiting for me to come out with a complete uh, ready to run torpedo system in 132nd scale are going to be disappointed, my apologies. Um, if you want some input, hit me up directly, bob at rc-sub.com. I can give you feedback uh, or information. Um, but don't come to me and say, tell me everything so I can build my own torpedoes. If you haven't done your own research and you know what you're talking about, do that first. Nothing bugs me more than people who reach out and say, tell me everything without doing research first. It irritates me and you will get nothing from me. I don't know how many times people have said, tell me everything there is to know about RC submarines in an email, a one sentence email. I'm like, if you can't take the time to tell me your background and what you're trying to find out, I don't have the time to help you out. So there you go. That's Mr. Opinionated today. Maybe I need another cup of coffee. I'm grumpy. So yeah, torpedoes. And I've also, I've, I've got master patterns for 32nd scale uh, gas torpedoes. I got master patterns for 148th scale um, gas torpedoes. Um, it's just a matter of time and energy. So just got to do the best that we can here. All right, what have I missed? Did I miss anything? Um, we got like thumbs up, three subs not finished. Hey, you and about a billion other people, um, RC subs are hard and uh, you, you gotta work through it. You know, one thing I'm gonna really, really recommend to you guys, if you are not already a member of the forums, forum.rc-sub.com, the link is on my website right at the top. That is where you go for information. 
the people who frequent my forums are amongst the most talented individuals in the world for this hobby. I kid you not. And they are um, absolutely some of the most welcoming people that you will ever come across. So again, provided you're not coming in, tell me everything there is to know. Um, if you got specific questions, you will get uh, virtually um, immediate responses to your inquiries. Um, typically with highly detailed photos, links to videos and all sorts of fun stuff, uh, it's free, why would you not do that? The camaraderie alone is worth it, but the information um, obviously is the icing on the cake. And uh, check out everybody else's you know, projects. It's just really, really cool there. Other thing I need to mention to you guys, man, I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. September 18th to 20th, put it on your calendars and you need to be at Kohutta, Georgia. All right, Kohutta, Georgia, September 18th to 20th. This is the first annual Subfest RC Submarine Fun Run and Regatta put on by yours truly and a core group of other exceptionally uh, talented and driven individuals uh, who are helping me out. It is at a, a facility I can't even uh, you know, begin to relate to you how cool it is. It's called the Red Clay Resort. It is a spring-fed um, pool, pond, with absolutely crystal clear water, concrete shorelines, there is power, there's shelter, there are um, camp uh, stoves, you know, like barbecue pits uh, there. There's a capability to camp in the parking lot. Um, there is, uh, from a venue perspective, it's absolutely awesome. It's about uh, 15 or 20 minutes um, north of the closest town, which is, which is you know, really nothing. Uh, Three-day event. Um, I have already got thousands and thousands of dollars of raffle donations and prizes for people who want to show up. Um, we are going to be uh, through my website, NautilusDryDocs.com, uh, for and in, in conjunction with the event, raffling off uh, some really rare kits, and the proceeds from that are going to benefit the uh, American Cancer Society. Um, as you know, I went through a bit of a, of a challenge or battle with that uh, about a year ago. So um, it is absolutely going to be worth your while to come out there. Um, there are going to be dozens and dozens and dozens of fellow bubbleheads, and uh, we are going to be doing subs solid for three days. And that's not just you walking around and saying, oh, that's really cool. But uh, what I'm hoping to do is uh, set up some dedicated seminar times on common topics that people want to cover. And we may keep that really informal and just bring that up um, when we're there in person or we could pre-schedule it. But um, three days, September 18th to 20th, Cahuta, Georgia. All of the information uh, is on my website. There's a gigantic like banner as soon as you come in there for Subfest 2020. Uh, you can RSVP through there. Everybody who comes uh, gets free t-shirt and obviously uh, opportunity to buy into the raffles and get raffle prices. There will be free prizes as well. Um, and like I said, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of really, really cool stuff donated by the hardworking individuals who keep this hobby afloat and sinking and coming back up again. So absolutely, by all means, you need, need, need to come out. If you can't come out, please spread the word on Facebook, on social media, that this is going on. Um, if it's gonna be a success and, uh, and be relaunched next year, then um, we need to, to make sure that it's a success this year. Now, obviously, a lot of people have a lot of concerns about this whole COVID thing that is going on. Um, we will be uh, adhering to local Georgia regulations and recommendations in terms of uh, an event like this. Um, but uh, just bear in mind from a kind of a safety perspective, we're going to be uh, a long ways away from highly populated areas outdoors. So the odds of you catching anything are about as low as you could possibly get. Um, I think this is going to be pretty, pretty uh, safe and, and comfortable for people. All right. 
So uh, check that out. If you have any questions at all, um, again, hit me up, bob at rc-sub.com. I'll give you all of the details. Um, and on my channel, actually, there is uh, the, the um, event summary, the teaser, uh, so to speak. I'll be coming out with another one here right away. I've got two people out at the venue this weekend who are getting some video of their sub working along with some drone footage. So you need to check it out. All right. Um, let's see here. Anything else that I missed? Sub building discord, you know, uh, there are other groups out there. I tend to focus on YouTube, um, and Facebook a little bit on Instagram, um, and the forums, honestly, you know, um, as a, as a vendor trying to keep on top of a dozen different platforms is pretty ridiculous. Um, I know platforms like Discord have a lot of benefits, but um, I think in terms of sheer power and popularity, the forums are still the way to go. So I don't know personally of any other platforms, you know, such as Discord that have, um, you know, conversations and that kind of thing pertaining specifically to RC submarines. But uh, hopefully you don't have anything against forums because that is where it is happening. Bear in mind too, and this is just my opinion, the platforms like Discord are, are a little bit uh, more oriented towards the younger crowd. And uh, the people in this hobby tend to be not that. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, you know, um, I have many, many customers who uh, don't have cell phones, who don't have email addresses, and who refuse to pay me in anything other than cash or a written check crazy welcome to the 21st century not that i have anything against it i'll take your money in whatever form you want to give it to me but it is a little bit frustrating trying to correspond with somebody give them information when they send me a letter through the post office and then i have to write them a letter back you know by candlelight delivering it by horseback apparently but <laughs> there you go all right that's all i'm going to say about that um coming up on the 47 minute mark which means we got 10 minutes left everyone um advice on how to get better reception to my submarine i lose the signal at 50 feet at four inches of depth all right so <sighs> There's a lot of different factors involved with that. And I talked about this previously, that water uh, content clarity is probably one of the biggest factors that you're going to encounter. So, you know, if you're consistently in the same body of water having the issue, you might wanna try it at a different body of water to see if the problem persists, okay? And if so, you may need to simply change your venue. Um, from a signal perspective, there's three main things that affect your signal quality. That is uh, minerals, chemicals, and biological contaminants in the water. Fresh water is a great conductor of low frequency radio waves. Uh, as soon as you start putting stuff in it, that uh, ability to, to transmit those radio signals begins to degrade significantly. Um, another factor to bear in mind is that the further away you are from your submarine, the shallower you will be able to dive because you've got an air-water interface and the radio waves tend to skip off of the surface of the water. So the closer you are, uh, the better you're going to have. And that's not necessarily because of the strength of the radio waves, but simply that interface between air-water and the angle of interface that you have there. Another thing to consider is antenna placement. Ideally, you want to have your antenna stretched out as long as you can possibly make it. So uh, in the case of my 21, this is my video receiver antenna. And uh, it runs out of a waterproof seal that I've further sealed with silicone. And this will run basically the length of the hull just below the water line, or ideally above the water line. I don't know, we'll see, I'll figure it out. Um, when you stretch it out like that, you, you maximize the ability for that antenna to catch the uh, transmissions from the transmitter. 
Another option, um, this is the radio and the radio antenna for this upholder. And what I've done is I've run that down under this equipment tray and I've run it back and forth around the perimeter. And again, stretching it out as far as I can within the confines of this particular um, cylindrical section of the boat. So you wanna make sure that uh, you have that antenna stretched out as much as possible. Another thing that's gonna potentially uh, affect it, although you would see this manifest more as glitching rather than loss of signal, is uh, proximity to electrically noisy components. And those are typically motors. Motors for your main drive motor or motors for pumps. Um, and you can uh, reduce that uh, by adding capacitors across the terminals. Uh, you can also add uh, ferrites to the power cables that will help um, remove that, that interference <clears throat> that could potentially affect reception. So there you go. I touched on uh, a number of things that uh, could potentially um, affect your reception. Hopefully that helps. Um, well, you could increase your transmitter wattage. Yeah, that's true. But uh, I would say that that is most likely out of reach of the vast majority of hobbyists. So yeah, you could you could definitely do that. And you also need to watch about um, uh, FCC regulations about uh, power output for radio transmission devices because if you screw around with that too much it well actually the minute you touch it you've uh, you've negated the um, FCC clearance for that specific device because it's got um, FCC clearance for that specific configuration all right so you're right but if you screw around with things too much, uh, there could be ramifications. We'll just leave it at that. All right. Uh, how's your day? Hey, somebody asked me how my day was going. That's awesome. Thank you for thinking of me. It's been great so far. Um, looking forward to the weekend. We're supposed to be getting back to normal Florida weather here, by the way, which means basically beautiful in the morning and thunderstorms all afternoon. Um, that's the summer prognosis for Florida, in case you uh, were wondering what our days typically look like. Um, hey, I'll finish off. I just wanted to let you know because I'm super excited about it. I'm getting my pilot's license. I am uh, like uh, halfway through uh, my private pilot's license um, courses. I'll be flying solo here in a few days as soon as my medical clearance comes up. Um, that got delayed because having had a history of cancer, um, they don't like uh, to just give you your medical clearance. It has to go up to the FAA and some higher up person there needs to check it out. Um, yeah, so waiting for that and then I get to fly solo all by myself. That would be super exciting. So, uh, hey, if I'm not here next time, you'll know what happened. Check the news. David Merriman says you don't have wings, so you shouldn't fly. Well, you don't have gills. You shouldn't have gone under the water. So take that. All right, guys. Last chance for questions. Rent a plane or do I own one? Dude, I don't even have my pilot's license left. You, know, you think I got like an, an airplane just in case I do get it? <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's in the it's in the, the the plan. If things go well, then then yeah, I, I I'm toying with the idea of flying out to the event in Georgia from here. That would be pretty epic. Um, all right, I could talk airplanes for you guys, but you came to talk about <laughs> RC submarines. All right. Oh boy, Zerfix is uh, a little grumpy this morning. Maybe you need to have your morning coffee too. Sorry, I missed your question. I think you're asking about life in Florida. I'm a little off topic, but you know, here in Naples, it's great. Uh, old people don't like going outside. And so uh, our instances of COVID are really, really low. Uh, unlike places like Miami where all the young people live and uh, refuse to listen to their elders. So there you go, my two cents. All right, guys.
Five minutes left. Very last chance to ask any RC submarine related questions or any other questions that you may want to ask. And then I'm going to turn you loose to have uh, an epically awesome uh, weekend um, in July. All right. Got some thumbs up. I got some good lucks. Sounds like everybody is cool. Um, I'm going to cut her loose here then. I uh, thank you very much for joining me yet again uh, for this uh, YouTube live presentation by the RC sub guy. Uh, check out the website for all of the next ones. Um, next dive tribe is, um, I don't know, 20 some 26th. It's on my website, dude, right on the, right on the homepage in the bottom left hand corner. If you, if you look in there, um, yeah, I don't have it pulled up. Well, you know what? Here, let me look it up for you. Gosh, darn it. Like I making me do all the work. Next dive tribe online is Saturday, July 26th, 2020 at 8 a.m. Eastern. So same time, Saturday the 26th. Um, and again, that's uh, members only. Log into the dive tribe um, home section there and you will get the link and uh, again guys this is a live video thing everybody can chime in ask questions it's pretty epically awesome make sure you do it all right gonna let you go thanks a lot everyone bob martin the rc sub guy the nautilus dry ducks you guys have a great weekend and uh, we'll catch you next time